Hi, my name is Sarah McCourt and I am the artist and owner of Canvas Paint and Wine Oh My. I specialize in private and corporate painting events in Southern California and today I'm going to be teaching you all this painting right here. Now of course we're going to work on a smaller canvas so that it's beginner friendly, beginner and intermediate friendly actually. So if you already have a little bit of painting skills you'll still feel like you're being challenged a little bit with this painting and if you have no painting skills don't worry because I'm going to be painting right along with you step by step. Before we get started, I'm going to go ahead and go over all the supplies we need to accomplish this painting. But thank you so much for joining me and welcome to class. So for the supplies, we need a canvas. Now today I'm using an 11 by 14 canvas. So that means the dimensions I give you for things like the horizon line and where the trees come in will be suitable for an 11 by 14. If you decide to go with a different size, that's totally fine. Just adjust your dimensions. Uh, we have a ruler and a pencil. We're just going to be measuring a couple of things like I mentioned. And we also have three different paint brushes. So take a look at these here. As long as you have something similar to this, you'll be just fine. Uh, I have this sort of uh, thick bristle. It's a flat bristle, kind of a big flat bristle brush. I call this the large brush. Then we have two other brushes. These look kind of similar, but just take a look at the bristles on the end of the brush. This one is a round bristle brush, so kind of comes to a nice point, works really well for small little details, uh, which we'll get into, especially for the palm fronds. And then this one is, again, a flat bristle brush. You can see if you turn it to the side, it's very skinny this way, a little wider this way. Uh, you can see it's about the size of my fingertip. And then this one, of course, we want this one to be pretty small so we can work with small little brush strokes here. Uh, you have also some paint here on the plate. Now, today we're working with acrylic paint. If you work in oils, you probably already know how to adjust for that, but I'm going to be discussing everything that pertains to acrylic paints. So these are acrylic paints on the plate already ready to go. I have my primaries, yellow, blue, and red. I also have black and brown. This is a uh, basic brown. I think it's called raw umber. Yes, raw umber. And this is a yellow oxide or yellow ochre. Same idea here. Uh, and then, of course, white. Now, I usually work with a few different plates so that we can mix some of our colors on these extra plates. And this is just a basic paper plate. Now, for the paint brand, it doesn't really matter. I recommend um, any kind of acrylic that you may have on hand. You don't have to go out and buy anything special. But if you are looking for something, this basics brand is quite nice. And um, of course we need a water cup for rinsing the brushes, paper towel for drying, and I have an apron to protect my clothing, and I'm gonna be working on this easel today. If you prefer to work flat, that's okay, but I like to work on an easel. Okay, so we have all of supplies set up here. I'm going to be working on this canvas. As I mentioned, it's an 11 by 14, um, and here I have my paints ready to go. Now before we get started, I do need to draw in the horizon line. That's where the water meets the sky here. And for this painting, it's actually quite low. I have it down here toward the bottom. So we're gonna grab our ruler and our pencil, and we're just gonna measure two inches up. Make sure you're looking at the inches side of your ruler, of course. And measuring from the bottom left corner, we're gonna come up two inches and give ourselves a mark right there on the canvas. And the same thing over here on the right, measure up two inches. Give yourself a mark. And then just match up the ruler with those two marks so that we have a nice level line here. And draw your horizon line all the way across. Now we're gonna be working, uh, kind of imagine we're splitting the canvas in half. The left half are for the two smaller trees and the right half is that larger tree. So the larger tree takes up almost twice the amount of space as the smaller trees. Now if you find yourself getting a little stuck with spacing, you could always just eliminate a tree if you need to, but that's the idea. Split it in half, two on the left, one on the right. As far as painting and drawing the trees, that's all going to be done with the brush. So right now we're finished with the pencil and ruler, and we're going to start by mixing our sky color. That background needs to go on first. Now, I have this brush I talked about, which is the kind of longer um, handle brush with the flat bristles here, about the size of my fingertip. Remember, it's flat. And this brush works well to paint with, but I also use this as a mixing brush to mix my paint. 
Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and get started mixing the first colors for my sky. And I need to soften this brush first. If you're like me, um, these brushes are probably a little stiff because you've maybe recently cleaned them or they're brand new. So you just need to tap it on the bottom of your water cup to kind of loosen up those bristles and then make sure you dry it off nicely. And we're going to go ahead and get started by mixing our sky colors. Now the sky colors are kind of versatile, of course. I have a variety of sort of very light kind of pinkish purpley color in there toward the horizon and then I also have some yellows a little higher up so we're gonna mix a couple of colors right now first I'm gonna start by taking a nice big scoop of my white now whenever I mix colors I bring them to the edge of my extra plate we'll call the mixing plate and I'm gonna go ahead and grab two scoops of white actually now uh, I'm gonna work on the edge so that I can kind of keep the paint under control here and we'll push it down toward the edge of the, the plate. Now I'm gonna make the very light yellow color first and I just need to take a teensy little bit of that yellow, very little, and mix that into the white I brought to my mixing plate and you'll see a very soft yellowy color. That's all we need. I like this background sky to be very soft in color, nothing too vibrant. I actually looked out the window and saw the sky the day I was inspired to paint this painting, and this is what I saw. So this is how faint the colors were that day. So very light yellowy color. Now, I'm also gonna make a very light peachy color. So I just need to split this in half. I'm gonna scoot some of it over, leave half the pile where it is, scoot half the pile over, and now I'm gonna take just a very small little corner of my brush and get a little bit of red. And I'm just gonna mix it into one of those piles. Now believe me when I tell you, red will take over your color so fast. So just go very light with just a little bit of that red. And you'll see it kind of turn to a nice peach color. Now I notice I use the edge of the plate here to scrape out the excess of the brush excess paint out of the brush. I don't want to waste any of that paint. And now I'm finished with those two colors. I'm going to go ahead and rinse this brush. Trying to get all that paint off of there. Okay, now I'm going to work into the blue, light blue color, sort of a purpley blue. So again, same thing. I'm going to grab a nice big scoop of white, actually two putting it in a new spot here on my mixing plate. Notice I'm just sort of working my way around the edge here so I have plenty of space for my colors. So there are my two scoops of white. This time I'm just gonna take a little bit of blue, mix that in. Okay, now I have this very light blue color. If you like a little more blue, you can. I'm gonna leave it a little light like that. And then again, just like before, I split this pile in half, I'm gonna do the same thing here. So I have equal portions of this light blue right now. Now to one of these, I'm gonna add a little red again. Now this time, this little bit of red is going to make this turn slightly lavender. And you can see I've got a little carried away with that red. Now it's very pinkish, I don't want that. So here's a fix, a little more blue. Put that in there, and there you go. Now you have purple. Kind of a nice lavender color. And you know, I kind of like that with the, with the amount I have in there, so you can always fix, don't worry. Okay, so now I have my lavender, I have my light blue, I have my peach, and I have my light yellow. So again, just scrape all the excess out and rinse your brush. So those are the colors that we have ready for our sky. We're gonna go ahead and get started with our sky and we'll come back in a few minutes and mix some more colors for our water. So for our sky painting, I'm gonna grab the large brush this time. And again, I haven't softened this one yet, so just gonna dip it in the water, loosen up the brush a little bit and dry it on the paper towel. Now you can either start from the top and work your way down or you can start from the horizon and work your way up. I'm actually gonna start at the horizon. Normally I work from the top down, but in this case, I like the way the color transition goes um, as I work up, so either way is fine. Uh, here at the horizon is that really light blue color. So I'm gonna start with just a little bit of that light blue on the tip of the brush. You can always add more, so just start with a little. And we're just gonna start right here on the horizon. 
Now it looks very light in color, but don't worry because we're going to mix some more uh, as we go up. We're going to grab some of that lavender and it will change this a little bit. So I'm just working my way across. I call it like one row at a time. So this is sort of the first row that my brush fits here right at the horizon. Now if you have a wobbly hand, don't worry because our water is blue. And if this gets a little below the horizon, this is blue as well, so it won't hurt it at all. Now, if you have a, a canvas that has an edge to the side, I always take my brush to the edge and kind of pull forward like this on each side because I like it to look like the painting wraps all the way around the canvas. It's nice to work from back to front when you work these sides. You don't want to take your brush and run it this way because the brush can overlap this edge here and kind of mess up your painting if you do that later. Okay. So uh, go ahead and just smooth that out. Work from one edge without lifting, go all the way across, and then you'll get rid of all those little brush strokes that you kind of see as you're painting. Now I'm gonna go ahead and grab a little bit of that lavender. I'm not rinsing my brush because I do want the color combination here. And now I'm gonna go ahead and work one row above where I've just left off, grabbing more paint as I need. And you'll see this will get a little quicker as you go. Now, I want to sort of blend this color down into the color that I've just left here, the light blue. And right now I have two stripes of color. I don't want to see those stripes. So I take my brush and I kind of blend where those two colors are coming together. Blend, blend, blend. And there you go. You get rid of that stripe. And now you have a nice transition of color going from light blue to sort of the lavender color. And you can blend as much as you need to. And that's it. Work the sides. And we're going to grab some more lavender, go up again. One more row up here. Okay. Now I'm going to grab some more of the light blue this time. So I'm going to kind of go back and forth between some of these colors. I like this sort of streaky, you know, changing color look in the sky. So it's not just one flat sky color. need to blend down a little bit. If you see a stripe coming, remember you can always take it and blend it down over the wet paint. Now, acrylic paint does dry really quickly, so if you need to blend, do it right away because once that paint is dry, you can't blend. It's just going to paint another layer on top of it, but it won't blend at all. So if you need to blend, make sure you do that right away. Now, I'm just kind of grabbing a little bit of lavender there, and I grabbed a little light blue again, you know, here I'm just kind of playing freely with my paint. Notice that it's starting to have a little bit of variation in the sky here instead of just one flat color. And that's exactly what I want. Okay, I'm gonna go light blue one more time because I wanna transition into this yellow here. And I'm about halfway up the sky right now. Now, once you have that, work the sides as you go up. Now I want to rinse my brush and here's why. If I go from yellow, or sorry, if I go from light blue into yellow, it might have a green mixture right there on the canvas and I do not want green in my sky. So the trick around this is when I stop with the light blue here, I need to grab some pure white, which I've just grabbed from my first plate, just some of that pure white I had. And I'm putting that up above the light blue that I just stopped with. So this next row up with some plain white. I call this kind of like the buffer zone. So I need a white buffer zone. And now I can grab some of my light yellow. Now the light yellow, I want to start in the row above the white. I'm not overlapping the white yet, but I will. So I'm going to go above the white here, one row up. Now I can blend down, but when you blend down, only go down into the white. Don't take it all the way down into the blue because again, we weren't trying to avoid any green tinge to the sky. So again, working my sides. There we go. Now I've avoided making green. I've just stayed in that white buffer zone. So now from this point on, I can go the same as I did below here with the blues and purples, now I can go with my yellow and peaches. And I'm just grabbing a little peach now. Now you can see my colors are very subtle. You might not be able to pick up on the peach color all that much in this lighting, but I'm gonna try to get a little color in here so you can see it. Mm, pretty light. 
I'm gonna add a little red to mine so you can see it hopefully here. There, almost pinkish there. And I went right on the canvas with that. Yeah, now you can start to see that peach up here. I kind of like that. And then I'm gonna top it off here with some yellow again. Again, just transitioning back and forth between the two colors so you get some vibrancy in your sky and you don't get that flat, plain sky. Okay, now you can also do the top the same way as we did the sides. Make sure you start with your brush to the side and pull forward and go all the way up. And the same thing here, I'm starting it in the back side and pulling forward so that I don't get any marks on the front that I don't want. Okay. So uh, once you are finished, I always scrape all the excess out of my brush before rinsing because I don't like to get up and change my water cup a bunch of times. I usually am lucky and can get through one whole painting without having to change the cup because I scrape all the extra paint out first before I rinse my brush. So try to do that if you can. So I'm gonna set that large brush aside and I'm gonna switch back now to my mixing brush. We're gonna mix some of our colors for our water and our water is blue and kind of purpley blue. So sort of the same idea as these sky colors here, but with less white. So I'm gonna grab my original plate again here with my paint pour. And I'm gonna start this time with two scoops of blue. And I'm gonna only take about a half scoop of white. And I'm gonna mix that together. working toward the edge of the plate. And then once I have that, I'm gonna split it in half, just like we did before with our sky colors. So now I have two piles of that blue. And to one of the piles, I'm gonna add a little bit of red. So I would say maybe the corner of your brush, a little bit more red than we did before, but not much. And you can mix that into one of these piles. And you can see it start to turn kind of a nice purpley blue color. Now for our water area, we want it to look like soft waves rolling in, a little bit of transition of color in the water, kind of similar to the way we just did our sky. Uh, but this time I'm gonna paint it with this mixing brush, so this like flat, smaller brush. And since I already have that purple on the brush, I'm just gonna go ahead and start with that color. And we usually see this color right here at the horizon. Now I'm gonna tilt the brush down a little bit. Instead of taking it straight on perpendicular to the canvas, I'm gonna tilt it down a little. And really what that does is it gives me more control uh, using the edge of the brush only. I'm gonna show you here. If I tilt it down, I can get a really thin line. And notice I just work my way across in these sort of small dashes. This way I don't have to worry about keeping my hands super steady. If I were to do it like this without lifting, I'm gonna ultimately have this sort of wavy line that I don't want. Here I can control it a little bit more, just working these small dashes. Now I'm gonna show you the difference between keeping it tilted down and going up. If you go up perpendicular, you're using a larger portion of the brush and it usually flattens out and see how much thicker that line is. There's nothing wrong with that, but I'm just showing you how to keep it under control even more. Then of course, if you need to grab more paint, go for it. Work your way all the way across the horizon. And if you wanna wrap the edges now, you can, or you can do it after for this water area. So now I have the horizon finished and I get to fill in this whole area with water. I want it to look like a soft rolling wave coming in. So I'm just gonna use this purpley color first and I'm gonna put in these horizontal lines and I'm breaking them all up. I don't want them to be in one solid mass. I wanna have some spaces in between here. And you'll see why in just a few minutes. This is how we get this nice, soft, rolly wave look coming into shore. And again, if you wanna just grab some paint on the sides as you're working your way, that's fine. I'm not too worried about it matching up on the front and back, uh, the sides here. It'll look this, the same as you look across. Okay, so about that much paint on there for the first color. You can see it already starts to look a little watery and a little like waves coming in. And now I'm gonna grab some of this blue, not the purpley one, just the regular the, of the two that we've just mixed, this sort of light blue, or medium blue, sorry. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna fill in the white spaces here. 
Now, if your colors look too similar, mine look pretty similar, I'm gonna add a little more white to this one just so I have more of a contrast between those two colors. Can always fix, so don't worry. All right, now I have this lighter blue this time. Now, what that was was just these two colors we had made for our water. I just added a little more white to the, to the blue one, the purpley one I left alone. So I'm just filling in these white spaces if you happen to overlap some of that purple area, that's no problem at all. I'm just grabbing a little more white because I still can't see the difference on camera. In real life you can, but I want you guys to be able to see it. Okay, so just working my way into these spaces. So as I said, you can cross over that purple a little. I just try not to do too much blending here because you'll ultimately just get one solid color and I want to be able to see those two different colors and that's what's giving me that feeling of waves rolling in. Keep some of those trend, some of those differences in the colors. Don't blend, 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 blend or you'll lose it. Okay, so you're just going to want to keep filling in here until you get all the white covered. Now some people in my classes say, oh I really like some of that white showing and if that's what you like, that's totally fine. Don't worry, you can leave it as you like it. grabbing some here on the sides as well, on both sides. Okay. Now, if you get down to that bottom edge and you're having a hard time, you can just lift the side of my canvas. It has like a frame behind it, so I'm just holding it like that and lifting it up so I can get down to the bottom. So now it looks like water down there. And you can also do the very bottom edge if you'd like. I'm gonna go ahead and do that as well. So we don't forget that. Okay, so that's it for the water. I'm gonna go ahead and rinse my brush. Now you may notice my horizon line isn't perfect. If you need to adjust, you can. I'm gonna go rinse and I'm gonna show you how to fix that because maybe it bugs you. <laughs> so let's go ahead and fix. I'm gonna grab some more of that purple again, that purpley blue that we made. And all you need to do is just bring up the horizon line just a little bit here. Just working it across as we did before with these small little dashes. Hopefully we can get this balanced out. If your horizon keeps getting higher and higher, that's okay. Just take it a little at a time. But try not to be too much of a perfectionist with this. Painting is just meant to be fun. And it's an expression of what you enjoy about an area. We are not architects, right? Okay, so go ahead and rinse the brush. And now we are ready to mix some of our colors for our trees. We're gonna let this dry for a few minutes. And in the meantime, mix. So if you want to switch to a different mixing plate, if you're already filled up here, just grab a couple so that you have plenty on hand. And I'm gonna go ahead and mix the color for the tree trunks, the palm tree trunks. So we have two different colors going on in the palm tree trunks. We have the shadowed side and we have the highlight side where the sun's like kind of kissing the edge of it and making it look a lot brighter. But first I wanna make that darker color. And in order to do that, I need to use my brown and my black and in the highlight side, we're gonna use some of that yellow ochre or yellow oxide. I say both because it could be called either. A lot of brands have the exact same color with different name on it. So if you see yellow ochre or yellow oxide, that's pretty similar in color, you're good to go. Okay, so I'm gonna grab some of my brown. I'm gonna go for a nice big scoop of my brown. And I'm gonna add maybe about a quarter of scoop of the black. Now notice I'm talking scoops. It's about how much I can fit on a brush. So as long as your proportions are the same, you should be fine. Okay, so I'm just gonna mix those together and we're looking for sort of a dark chocolate color here. Mix, mix, mix. Okay, now uh, I forgot to mention to you earlier, if you're using that Basics brand, it can be a little thicker in paint. Uh, the paint consistency is thicker. You can always add a few drops of water into it to thin it out. 
because especially when you get to those smaller brush strokes, you need the paint to feel more fluid. And sometimes it's so stiff out of the tube that it, it's, it's like trying to put on wax on the, the canvas and it doesn't really fill in the grooves of the canvas well. So by adding a little water to it, it really helps make it a lot easier. You don't want it so thin that it's dripping down your canvas, but just a few drops of water, stir it together. It should kind of feel, I always say like a thin yogurt. That's your ideal consistency for this paint here. So uh, feel free to add a little water until it feels like a nice runny consistency, like ketchup or thin, thin yogurt or something like that. Okay, so that's my dark color for my tree. Again, I'm just gonna scrape my brush, get all the excess out and not waste any paint. And then I wanna make the lighter color. So I'm gonna rinse because I don't want any of this in the brush. Now for the lighter color, that's gonna be that yellow ochre, yellow oxide. You're gonna take a nice big scoop of that and a new spot on the plate here, the mixing plate. And now I wanna add a little bit of white. My, my, my white is getting pretty dirty here, but don't worry, you can always just take some more out of your pump or just work from the edge of the white here and just get a little clean. So I'm taking about a quarter scoop of my white. Stir that together. That's just gonna give you that nice bright sunshiny color for the palm tree trunk. Okay, there we go. And then just scrape out the excess and we're gonna rinse. Now we're gonna rinse because we wanna actually start with a darker color with this brush. Now I'm gonna start with the larger tree over here. Remember, it's gonna be the right side is the larger tree and the left side are the two smaller trees. So let's start with the larger trees so we can kind of get a feel for this brush and how to apply it and then hopefully work with the smaller ones as we work our way across. So I'm gonna start with the dark brown and I'm using the same brush, the mixing brush, the sort of middle size brush or the long handle flat bristle brush. And I want this tree to be on this half. I don't wanna put it too close to this edge because if I do, it'll look like the palm fronds are kind of falling off the edge here and I won't have enough space to make like a nice pretty tree. So I wanna place the trunk far enough in that I have like a nice full tree top here, palm tree top. So I'm kind of estimating it to be maybe about the size of a baseball or a softball here uh, on this side. And I wanna make sure that the trunk goes in the center of that. So about here. And as far as how high up to bring the trunk, I'm gonna start it about halfway up the canvas. So here's where the tree, the palm fronds will be and the tree trunk straight below and about halfway up the canvas. Now I've turned my brush the thin way here. I wanna start with a thinner brush stroke. You can always make it thicker, so it's better to start out a little thin. Now here my brush has run out of paint, so it's okay, I just need to grab some more, start where I've left off, and continue all the way down. We're gonna go all the way to the bottom edge of the canvas, overlapping that water. And we can make this a little thicker, but it's best to start just a little thin like this versus starting way too big. Once it's too big, you're stuck with it. So let's just kind of slowly increase the size of this. I'm just holding up my canvas because I can't really get to the bottom edge very easily. So I'm holding it up so I can get my brush all the way down there. And then once I have that, I can sit it back down in the easel. Okay, so I feel like that's a pretty good size, a pretty good height. And I'm putting the paint on in a thin uh, application because I want to, I'm thinning it out right now actually, it was a little thick. I wanna be able to put that highlight color on in just a few minutes. And if it's sitting there super thick with color, it'll take a lot longer to dry. Uh, nothing really wrong with that. It's just, you know, if you wanna move right along like I am, you don't want it to be too thick. So that's my first tree trunk. I'm gonna let that dry for just a minute here. And now I'm gonna work on these two smaller uh, trees over here on the left. So these two need to fit here side by side. And again, I don't want it to be too close to the edge because I don't want the palm fronds falling off, you know, half the tree falling off. So these are gonna be a little bit shorter, but not too much. So I'm gonna put the first one about here. Again, I'm just working with the brush the thin way so I can control how thick it is. And I think this time, I'll probably just leave it at this thickness. I'm not gonna go double like I did there, double the thickness. So just overlapping it just because I didn't get enough paint on there. So there's one, 
and the other one just next to it maybe a little taller not much the reason you want to go a little taller maybe here is that way the palm fronds don't all run into each other you have a little bit of a different spacing at the top okay so there we go now i am ready to add uh, the highlight side so like i said as long as you've done this pretty thin if it's a little bit wet it's no big deal you just don't want it to be super caked on like frosting so i'm rinsing my brush i'm actually going to switch brushes now to this small little round brush you can see it's about the thickness of the i have another tree in there uh, so the small round brush and i haven't used this one yet so i do need to soften the bristles and just gently dry this one flat across your paper towel. You don't want to spin it. I see a lot of people do that. They spin the edge of the breast bristles thinking it's going to come to a point. Actually, just freeze the bristles. So if you do need to do anything with your fingers, pull it straight out, but do not twist it. Okay, so now I'm going to grab the lighter mixture here that I've made on my mixing plate with the yellow ochre and white. I just need to get a little bit on the tip of the brush. Now I want to make it look like the sun's kind of coming across the right edge of the tree here. So I'm just going to get a little bit of that paint on there and I'm holding the brush pretty flat to the canvas here because I want to sort of pull the brush across. I don't need to worry about using it perpendicular. I'm just going to hold it flat like this and I'm starting here on the right edge of the tree and just pulling these little soft and what I'm doing is I'm putting the brush down and then as I pull across, I lift it. So I get this sort of jaggedy edge to make it look like the texture of the palm tree. I'm changing my grip here because I'm running out of space. You can also lift the canvas if you want to so you can get down here to the bottom a little easier. Now, I kind of like this to look a little abstract, so I'm not too worried about it being perfect at all. What I do try to do is get right here on the right edge of the tree pretty nicely, and then as I pull across, I don't worry about it too much. I would say some of these um, little stashes are going about a halfway across, and some of them go maybe three quarters of the way across, and that just makes it look more natural. You don't want it to all be the exact same length as it comes across, otherwise you just split the tree in half, and it looks very artificial. So it's better to have a natural jaggedy line. I'm going to show that up close because it can become sometimes hard to see what's happening here. So you can see just a jaggedy little edge over there and that makes it look very realistic in a very abstract way. Okay, so the same thing over here on these. You're going to do the exact same thing for all three, starting over here on the right edge, just pulling these little dashes of the light yellow ochre color that we've mixed along the right side. And as I said, just little some different lengths so that you don't end up with a perfectly split in half tree. Sometimes I'm grabbing paint and sometimes I'm wiping it off. You don't want too much paint on there. You want just enough that it doesn't leave a big glop like that right there. Smooth it out. and the third tree now you try not to rest your hand on the wet paint most of this is dry uh, but here I don't want to accidentally drag some of the wet brown into the sky so I'm trying to sort of hover my hand here now if you do it at home you can take your time you can let it dry in between layers so that you don't have that issue usually acrylic paint takes oh, 10 minutes or so to be totally dry to the touch of course it does depend on humidity and how thick the paint is and so on but you can tell by looking at it if it looks kind of matte it's usually dry uh, for sure and if it looks shiny just be careful because that's usually a wet area okay so adjust as you need, but I think that's pretty good. 
So I'm gonna rinse that brush. And now I'm ready to do the uh, sort of dried palm fronds. They, they tend to kind of hang down over top of this a little bit um, on each side. The, a lot of times the tree trimmers will come and trim those dried bits off, but I was lucky when I looked out at, and saw these trees were in need of trimming because I really like the coloring that happens with the dried bits. So I'm actually gonna use the same two colors uh, that we've already created for the dried palm fronds that sort of hang down on the sides here. I'm gonna start with the dark coloring. Now this is especially important if you had that thick paint, you do want to take a few drops of water, even if your paint's already fairly thin. This really helps if you take a few drops of water from your water cup and stir it in to thin the paint even more. I'm just using my little round brush again here. Grabbing some water and what you want is a really thin, like almost like ink consistency. Uh, maybe a, like a thick ink, I guess. It's hard to explain, but I will show you what we're looking for here. So I'm gonna add water, 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 keep stirring it together. And what we do want is for it to be thin enough for it to start to kind of creep across your plate when you tilt the plate. So it's a kind of a little test you can do. And it does require a lot of water, depending on how thick your paint is, you may need to keep going with water. All right, so I think that's looking pretty good. So now I'm gonna tilt the plate. Notice this paint glob won't move at all. This one's just starting to kind of creep across the plate like a nice thick kind of gooey chocolatey. <laughs> of course, it's just paint, but a nice little gooey chocolatey mess here. So see how it's just starting to creep and crawl across when I tilt the plate like that? That's what you want. So we know that's perfect now. And I'm gonna start with this color since it's already on my brush and I do want it to have a nice deep base. Now, uh, if you got a lot of paint in your brush, rinse again. We do wanna be able to work with a nice thin little tip on the bristle here. Okay, just a little bit of paint on the very tip of the bristles. And I'm gonna start all of these at the top of each of these trees. Nothing would grow out of the sides. It's not like a standard tree, this is a palm tree. They would only have stuff growing here out at the very top for this painting here. So we're gonna start our brush here and before you get to the canvas, one little tip that I have everyone do in my classes, you can start by trying to draw a very thin line on the plate, just to kind of make sure that your consistency of paint is good and also, you know, here's what happens if you have a ton of paint in your brush and you push really hard, that's how thick it can go. Of course, we don't want, we don't want that, we want those little thin brush strokes. If you need to rinse your brush and start again with just a little bit of paint, that would be fine. And then as you're painting, the same. If you need to rinse your brush as you go, that's totally okay. Just make sure there's a little bit of paint on the tip of your brush. We're gonna start here with the top of the tree and I'm just gonna kind of pull these brush strokes down, very thin, almost like wispy lines. This is, we can imagine the, uh, the palm fronds that have already kind of died off, just little brown bits hanging down. And it's almost like a little bit of hair hanging at the top of the tree. Now, I think it's nice to have these little wispy ends. And in order to get that, you just start your brush and wherever you lift off, that's how you get that little wispy edge. You go slow. I'm doing it quite fast. You kind of get the hang of it after you've done a few of them. But you go here at the top and then pull down. And as you pull down, lift the pressure off of your brush to get these wispy edges. So I'm just doing a little mop almost on top of here. And it's okay to cross over the palm tree, the, the trunk that you've created, no problem. The palm fronds do hang 100, 100, 360 degrees around it, so you're gonna have it covering all bits from the top down. And there we go. So that's a good starting point. I do like to have it kind of not perfectly straight lines coming down, but like a little movement to it so that they don't look too artificial or natural. And also, uh, maybe sometimes they're a little shorter as they're over here and longest at this point. So it has this sort of U shape if you think about where the ends come. Okay, now we're gonna do the same thing over here. These trees are smaller and further away. So same idea, we just don't wanna make it as big because we wanna make it feel like these trees are a little further off in the distance and we're not getting as much detail as we are over here. You can always build up and up and up, so start out small. Just 
just doing the same to all three of these trees. Just add a little more over here to this one. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, rinse your brush, and we are gonna add some of the highlight color on. Now we had some of that yellow ochre mixture here left over. We do need to add some water to it to thin it out, but I also wanna add a little more white to it because it's gonna be sitting on top of the dark brown and I want it to be a little lighter than that. So I've just grabbed a full scoop of white. I'm adding it to this yellow ochre mixture. And now I do wanna add the water and again, because remember we need this to be able to kind of creep across the plate like the last color, the brown. So keep on adding water. Water, water, water. And stir it together. and just kind of keep checking the consistency as you're mixing in your water. I can tell by looking and feeling I do this enough. <laughs> but if you're just learning, you do need to test it. And what you want, again, is for it to start to kind of creep across the plate when you tilt the plate. And when I mean tilt it, you really want to tilt it like holding it like this. As you can see there's a little water droplet getting away. But this is already starting to move across the plate just like before. So that's what you want. So again, just kind of uh, rinse your brush so we can start with just a little bit of paint on the tip of the brush only. And we're gonna overlap what we've just done. Now I don't need to uh, cover everything up completely. I need to just add extra on top of it. So I want to be able to see uh, some of that brown there still too so we're just bulking it up a little bit and these are the parts that are sort of catching the sun just like our tree trunk the other parts are the same they're just uh, in the shadow so that's good now i can still see that dark showing through and i can also see the highlight on top of it and that's what you want that gives it much more fullness same thing on each of these That's it, and rinse your brush. And now we're gonna start working on the palm fronds. So I need to mix a few of the greens that we have here. Now um, you can mix using your mixing brush. I'm just gonna rinse that little round brush and set it aside for a minute. And we need to mix some different greens. We need a variation of greens because we need it to look like shadow and highlight the same as we just did here. So let's start with a basic green and then we can add some variations. I'm using my mixing brush again. I still have space here on my mixing plate, but of course, if you need to grab another, go for it. And I'm gonna start with two big scoops of yellow. Oh, that was a big scoop. Two big scoops of my yellow. And I'm gonna go ahead and add one scoop of blue to that and mix it together. And you should get your basic primary green here. Secondary green, rather, sorry. Primary colors are yellow, red, and blue. Secondary colors are what you can create by just mixing two of those. So here we are with our yellow and our blue to get this really pretty green. That's nice. All right, so I'm gonna split this in half. I'm gonna change it up a little bit for each of these colors. So for one of these, I want it to be dark. I want this shadow color. Now, if you have some of that brown left over from our trees, that's perfect. Remember, that was a combo of brown and black. So if you need to make more, go ahead. Uh, this is a full scoop of that brown and I'm gonna mix it into one of these piles of my green here so I can make the deep kind of forest green for the shadowed part of the palms. Now it is nice, uh, it's starting to turn dark, but it's not dark enough. I do need it to look very shadowy. 
So I'm going to add a little bit of black to it. Now here, be very cautious. You can always add more, but you can't take it out. So just a little bit of black at a time. I took about a quarter, maybe a little less than a quarter scoop of black on my brush, but it depends on how much paint you have here. So just ease into it. You can probably go a little darker. Okay, so that's a really nice deep forest green. That is perfect. Um, scrape out all the excess that I can, and I'm gonna rinse this. Now this next green, I need to lighten it up a little bit because it's the highlighted part. If you look out at palm trees ever in the sun, they're kind of glaring. They have almost like a white hint to them. So I need to brighten it up a little bit more. I'm gonna add a little of this yellow ochre mixture that we had from our trees. So a full scoop of that but I'm also gonna add a little bit of white. So just take the corner of your brush, maybe get a quarter or a little less scoop of white, and we're gonna mix that in here. This is much lighter than the last green. This is a nice kind of spring green. We have those two colors, and that's perfect. Rinse that brush, set it aside. We're gonna grab the little round brush again. Now we're gonna start with the dark because of course, just like before, we need to add the shadow in before we add the highlight on top. So the dark green, and this time we're gonna do some palm fronds. So uh, just the same as before, we need to have the paint kind of thin. If you need to thin it out, go ahead. I think mine feels pretty good, but of course, if you need to add some water to thin yours, go right for it. And then again, we need to be able to do these small little thin brush strokes. Uh, so practice if you need to, if you had a hard time with that. Uh, now for the palm fronds, they're all going to grow out of the top of these trees. We're going to do one at a time starting out here, and then you should kind of get the hang of it as you go, uh, and, and hopefully they get a little easier as you go. Um, so we're going to start here at the top. I'm just going to go kind of up and to the right for the sort of center of the palm frond. And then I want to do the, the little kind of wispy things that kind of hang down. So this is almost like the vein, the center vein of the the front. Now I'm going to start the brush on the line every time and kind of just pull these little wispy lines. Now this is definitely something that takes a little practice, so feel free to practice on your plate first. And oh, I do actually need a little water in there. Remember, water makes this a lot easier. If it's too thick, add a little water. It should kind of flow off the brush. It starts to jump around and leave gaps. That means it's too thick. There we go. Now, sometimes I like to do two sides of the of the palm tree, or sorry, palm frond, and sometimes I just leave it as one. Kind of depends on how I feel and what the, what's happening in the painting. I think on this, uh, I'm going to do two sides. So I just do the same thing on the other side of the palm vein, and I'm doing the top edge here. Same idea, kind of pull up and over. Now, uh, here's how I tell everyone to remember which side and which direction to pull with your brush. If let's imagine you're sitting at the top of this tree and you take a bow and arrow and you shoot it up over and to the right. That means all of these should sort of follow that same direction. So that bow and arrow would go over and to the right, over and to the right. Here's the same thing, over and up and over to the right. What you don't want is this sort of eyelash curl that comes here and then changes direction and goes back the other way. That's a mistake I see very commonly, so try to avoid that. So let's do the other side because once you understand which direction you're headed, you can just jump right in and start working. So here I'm starting at the top of the tree again. This time I'm going to go up over into the left. I want to keep them about the same length here. I don't want one really crazy and big and one small. Now this time we're going up over into the left. So that's the same thing for all the little lines that are coming off here. So over into the left, over into the left. Now here we're going bottom side first. And then the top side, and again, up over and to the left, because I'm on the left side here. Now, I, I notice I just put a few little wisps here on the end. Sometimes what happens is the, the tree will look like it kind of splits. When I'm seeing people do this, it looks like it splits on the end. I'll show you here real quick if you see this on yours. Let's say the tree is here, you know, and we got the palm fronds going this way and this way. And then a lot of times people leave a gap right here. All you need to do is just take a few little more brush strokes here in the center and fill it in and it feels much more full 
and nice. So I'm just going to keep on pulling these uh, palm fronds on the left. All right, now we have two done and you want to keep filling in and each time we're starting here at the top and you are absolutely okay to overlap. So notice that I just went over top of what I've already done on this tree. Totally fine. I always start on the bottom side first. So we're kind of hanging down here. But what you do want to make sure you do is keep going back all the way, all the way to the start. Sometimes people skip that part and then it just looks kind of funny because it starts to look bare. You want to make sure, even though you're overlapping, that you're crossing back over just like they would grow. Don't feel like you should skip spaces. I'm just adding a bit more water. In mine, it's starting to get pretty thick. All right, so I'm just going to keep on going. Now, of course, feel free to pause the video and work at your own pace here. I'm going to fast forward this so that you guys can, uh, you know, not have to sit in front of your camera forever or video forever and do it. You get the feel for it and uh, you can just sort of watch it and then do it at your own pace. I'm just filling in one palm frond at a time here and uh, I want to fill the tree in so that it feels nice and full. When I get here to the top, one of the things you want to be careful of, though, is sometimes people go way up with their brush don't, or with your palm frond. Don't get tempted to go way too tall. You can always extend it, so start a little shorter than you might think when you get up here, uh, and then see what you think, and if you need to add a little length to it, you can. But you don't want to get stuck with one really big, huge palm frond sticking out of the top, looking all crazy. All right, so I'm gonna um, move on to these. I'm gonna fast forward through all this so you can see it in super fast motion so that we can get uh, the timing pretty good here. Uh, but again, take your time when you fill these in and I'm gonna uh, stop and explain the light color here when I'm finished. So now I am ready to add some of the light green highlights on top and I'm going to do the exact same thing I just did except I've rinsed my brush. I'm grabbing some of that light green that we've made and I want to go over what I've already done but I don't need to cover everything completely. This is the highlight so usually uh, starting on the palm front again I don't need to redraw the center line. I just kind of overlap some of the leaves and then I fill in some of those spaces. You can see there's some gaps in there so um, sometimes I just fill in some of the gaps and sometimes I go over some of the leaves that I've already put on you can see that you just get that little little bit more depth than each of the palm fronds and I'm not too worried about putting like a hundred percent of what I've just put on there I just need it to you know feel balanced but um, you know not cover up everything that I've already done so you can see it's better here on this step to just add a little bit in at a time and then see what you need to add in to adjust. You can see I've just done this side only and it already feels much more full and lively and then the, these still are pretty dark. So I'm going to again fast forward the video here because you can start to get the feel for it pretty quickly. But I do recommend just adding a little bit in and then if you need to add more go for it. All right, so that's it. 
uh, for the highlight part. Now you might have an area that you're like, oh, I got too light. Like I feel like right here, I got a little too light. So you can always take a little bit of your dark back in there and then just kind of balance that back out. It's the great thing about acrylics is once it dries, you can cover it right back up. Uh, so if anything gets too heavy with one or the other, you can just go back in and fill it in. And now I did leave a little bit more darkness here and here on purpose. I like the way that this looks because this tree would be casting a shadow on this part of this tree. Uh, so that was a little bit intentional. Um, but uh, yeah, if I feel like this got a little too light, I can always come back in and add a little bit more dark. Here, especially in the center, less light would be filtering into here. So I like to just make it look a little bit more like the light would be hitting the edges instead of that center area. And maybe I feel like this part maybe needs a little bit more shadow. Great. Now, uh, if you wanna add any other little highlights in there, or maybe some birds. Sometimes people like to add birds, uh, and I would recommend just that real basic bird that we've learned when we were children, which is uh, a little V shape. Now start your brush here as a practice. Start it and then pull away, and then start in the center again and pull away again. Oops, got a little water droplet there. Uh, because wherever you put your brush down, that's the thicker part, and as you pull away, it gets thinner. So that means the center of the bird would be the thickest part, and it would start to kind of wisp away. Uh, like the wings do. So if you want to add that in, go ahead. Um, if you want to add anything else in there, go ahead. Now I do have some uh, very faint telephone wires that kind of cut across here. Um, now there are a few ways you can do that. I like to use a palette knife sometimes, or if you have a very small little brush, I didn't talk about this at the beginning, but something teeny tiny, even sometimes a toothpick works really well, just a teeny little uh, surface to drag a little bit of um, black across. Now, I think I would recommend practicing first, and I do recommend a really thin, watery version. I think I might make it a little gray, actually, because black might be a little too harsh on that sky. Now that I look at the original, it does look a little more gray, so I think I made a gray there. Uh, again, very thinned out. And here, we do not want a super solid, heavy line. I have three wires that cut across, uh, and I do have them at a bit of an angle. And especially here, do not worry about a perfectly solid, heavy line. It's better to go very light, and even if your hand jumps around a little bit, it's gonna look much more realistic than if you took a ruler and tried to draw that perfectly solid line. I kind of like, see how here I, it skipped around on me a little. I like that. It looks much more realistic to the eye. And it doesn't uh, deter and distract from the, from the palm tree here. Now, I do have three in the original, so I might as well add all three here. Uh, I have them separated out a little bit more on this side. And then as it comes across, they get a little closer together. Again, this was based on a reference out the window, so I'm going to try to mimic it again. Oops, so you got a little heavy there. I wanna make sure I go very light pressure as I come across. And I am skipping the trees because um, these would be behind the trees, but if you wanna make it look like it goes in front, that would be fine too. And that's it. So uh, if you'd like to sign your initials, I usually sign down here on the bottom right. I think that's a pretty common place for artists to sign. Um, but that's it. We've done it. Congratulations. Hopefully you did a good job. And if you enjoyed this video, feel free to check out my other videos on my website, canvaspaintandwine.com. Thank you so much for joining me.